I remember my first time. Hi there, Coach Stage Candidate of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about your first ultra marathon, or specifically maybe moving up from a shorter race distance like the traditional road marathon or even a half marathon 21k, and kind of the differences of what it takes to get into the ultra running realm. Now, ultra running being defined as any distance over the standard marathon distance, 42.2 kilometers, 26 2k usually that next step up would be a 50k or about 31 a uh, little over 31 miles so, so that's kind of the bridge you need to gap that extra eight kilometers or five miles to technically do an ultra now it could be a lot longer of a distance it could be a 50 mile or 80k race or even a 100 mile race coach sandy uh, my partner at sagehearning.com jumped up to 100 miles in distance for her first ultra marathon but for most people it's a good logical progression to start maybe at least with a road half marathon 21k or ideally a full road marathon 26.2 miles or 42k because uh, the differences are that usually when you transition up to a 50k it takes a lot longer if you're on trails so the component is first tip tip number one study the course of the event you're going to do if it's on a road you could kind of extrapolate your road marathon time, right? Maybe more of a flat course. But most 50K races tend to be trail races, could even be a mountain race. So you're talking about taking a lot longer of a time. Uh, you know, you could be running a three or four hour road marathon. Well, this 50K might take you five or six hours, depending on the hills and how technical or rocky or muddy the trails might be, right? There's a lot of steep hills, a lot of elevation gain. So be sure to note how much climbing is going to be needed in this race and what type of trail you're going to be running on. And that goes with my other first tip for transitioning from road marathon to trail running specific. It pays to have some good trail running shoes. Now, obviously, I'm sponsored by the brand Hoka One One. This is the Torrent model. It works really well for me. The main thing with the trail shoes is you're looking for traction lugs on the bottom and it depends how extreme the course is and what the weather conditions are and we'll get into weather conditions as well but the traction could really help you if it's a bit muddy it could rain and get muddy uh, there could be wet rocks and roots you could be running in a forest with uh, trees and other debris and obstacles you could be running on snow up and down steep grades in the mountains so a good comfortable trail shoe uh, is usually important because of the traction component. You could maybe wear a road shoe if it's dry and it's not technical and it's buffed out trails, but the risk of slipping around uh, is there when you don't have the traction. The other thing is, talking about gear, is you usually do need some more gear. It's a kind of a barrier to entry with ultra running, specifically ultra trail running, that the longer distance you're going, uh, the more you're gonna have to rely on things like having to be able to carry extra clothing, uh, like a rain jacket, having to be able to carry some water and food between aid stations. Unlike road marathons where there may be a water station, Gatorade, uh, electrolyte drink station, gel station every 5k or less, every 2k or every mile almost, uh, you could be out in the woods for 5 or 10 miles, uh, 8 to 16 kilometers at once, without having any support. So it's better to be able to carry some stuff with you. Now, how you want to do that depends on the runner and the type of course and how long you expect to be out there, but the most basic thing would be to have like a handheld. This is 17 ounces. Camelback, obviously I'm sponsored by them, but the great thing about these bottles is you could cinch down the hand strap so you don't have to squeeze the bottle and hold it, right? You could use a regular water bottle, but then you'd have to kind of grip onto it and it would use up too much well, it would use up energy in your arm. Whereas this, you can kind of go hands-free and it doesn't uh, flop around too much with a hand strap. It also has this nifty pocket where you could put an extra gel or some energy, salt tabs, things like that. And again, I've done videos on ultra running nutrition, long run nutrition, things like that. But generally, you know, 17 ounces, half a liter fluid, could be electrolyte fluid, could have some calories in it, 
Also keeping maybe a couple gels. This is my Spring Energy and our code Sage for a discount. Another sponsored product plug, but 100 calories a pack about and mostly carbohydrate base because when you're going between the aid stations, it might take two hours, one to two hours, right? And so you need to have some drink and some calories ideally to be taking in uh, on a regular schedule between these aid stations because you're kind of out on your own a lot of times in these races. Now, a lot of people wouldn't even, the, the handheld is one option. I usually would go a handheld and a belt. Uh, for most people, especially if you're doing your first ultra, you probably want to almost all right, go ahead and invest in a, a full vest uh, because you could carry two of those bottles up front and these nice nifty pouches, they go on your chest. But you could also carry, a lot of races require you to carry rain jackets and warm layers in case there, a storm comes in or you're going up a mountain and it gets cold. So you have capacity in the back to carry stuff and it doesn't bounce around too much. This is a pretty ultralight vest from Camelback. Again, I'm sponsored by this company so I'm showing off these products. But, uh, you know, this isn't a huge capacity vest. It's pretty lightweight. It's designed for running in, but it has pockets in it so you could you could add those gels. You could carry two of those bottles. That's a liter of fluid, right? It, a lot of the Camelbacks also have bladders uh, that you could put in the back of the hose and straw uh, to drink out of, and you'd refill it at an aid station. But those are a few of the gear items that you would look to getting in doing your first ultra marathon, especially if it's a trail ultra that you wouldn't necessarily usually carry with you in a road marathon. Some people do, but a lot of people you just could rely on the aid stations in a road marathon, especially if it's a big one, and you're running a lot faster on the road, so it doesn't take as long. So the main thing, the main difference is going into your first ultra marathon, study the course, look at how much climbing it is, estimate your finishing time based on that, and realize that it's probably going to take a lot longer. Even downhill, even big downhills on trails, you're running a lot slower usually than you would if it was like on a road or a road marathon, right? So you can't just extrapolate your road marathon best pace uh, because the, the mile splits or the kilometer splits could vary by minutes and it could take hours longer to go that extra distance to make it an ultra marathon. So the hydration becomes important, gear becomes more important, traction with your trail running shoes becomes more important, and pacing yourself becomes more important. And I'll close by telling you a little story about my first ultra marathon. And again, I've done some videos on making the training transition from road marathons to longer distance ultras. Uh, but in my experience, I started ultra running in 2012. I was coming off of a road marathon. I was actually, my last race before my first ultra was the 2012 US Olympic Marathon Trials where I ran a 218 on a flat course, Houston, good weather day. But I carried that marathon fitness, uh, it was my second fastest marathon, 218, 20 something. Uh, I carried that fitness over a couple months to extend it up to my first 50K, which was the Chuckanut 50K in Bellingham, Washington, state of Washington cold, snowy, rainy day, uh, I felt pretty confident going in, but some variables that didn't, I didn't anticipate was I actually ended up getting lost on the course. Uh, I was in the lead with Max King, and we both took a wrong turn at about mile 24, 35K in, uh, and I lost a mile there trying to get back on course, so I lost a lot of places, tried to fight my way back up to the lead, got into second place, but then in the last mile, I tripped because I was clumsy and I stumbled and fell and tumbled into this rock on the side of the road, go figure, it wasn't even a technical part of the trail, and cut my knee open. I cut my knee open and was bleeding all over the place, had to get uh, several stitches on the finish line and, uh, you know, that was my first ultra marathon experience. Pretty, uh, I was hooked after that. It was a lot of fun despite all the pain and stitches and not being able to run for weeks after that. Uh, and running extra miles, more distance, more fun, right? That's what Killian Dornette says. But, uh, or more kilometers, more fun, I guess. But, you know, you're gonna spend a lot more time out there on your feet, and so training with this gear is important. Dialing in your nutrition and hydration strategy is important. Realizing the pace is gonna be much, much slower, and it's more about the mindset of saying, hey, I'm gonna spend a big part of the day out on my feet, exploring in the woods. Hopefully it's a, a nice scenic trail running course, right? Uh, but you could be doing an ultra on flat road or on a treadmill or something like that and then it would correspond a lot more to your road marathon pace, right? But having that experience of the road marathon definitely helps. Running an ultra on the trails 
definitely going to take a lot longer. You need to prepare yourself mentally for that. So, you know, you have a hydration plan, you got your gear, but mentally you got to be thinking, you know, my legs are going to feel heavy. I'm going to have these rough patches. It's going to go up and down. You know, am I fueling myself enough between these aid stations? Have I trained enough hills, vertical gain, for the types of trails that I need to do my first ultra marathon on. So those are my top tips. Getting into your first ultra marathon, it's a blast. It's a blast. The sense of accomplishment of running that far uh, is is really rewarding. And you know, I'm not going to say it's necessarily the longer distance it is, the harder it is. It there's more variables that could go wrong though, right? Things like weather, having poor gear choice, having poor hydration will affect you more exponentially the longer time you spend out there, right? More things could go wrong. At the same token, it's a much more relaxed atmosphere, usually a much slower running paces. A lot of times you're walking kind of in and out of aid stations, digesting your food, or you're power hiking up really steep hills because it's so exhausting. But uh, it's an adventure. It's an adventure. It's super rewarding. It is very challenging. It's kind of as hard as it, it, you make it. But you know, so is running a flat 10k on the track, right? It's it's my it's tough mentally, and I think that's why we do these things is to try to see what we're made of, to test ourselves, to see what's possible, and to realize that our bodies are are stronger sometimes than our mind perceives them as being, right? You could find untapped limits and untapped potential in yourself when you do these extreme distance races, especially on gnarly terrain and, and trails, and it's just it's a lot of fun. So I hope. This helps you training for your first ultra marathon or racing, or if you've already done a couple, maybe you're moving up in distance. Uh, check back on here for more. Again, business plug, Coach Sandy and I do sell training plans at sagerunning.com for any service, any distance. We have beginner 50K trail plans, uh, as well as mountain running plans, stuff like that. Title sponsor, Hoka One Aone, keeping the dream alive. Thanks to the Patreon supporters for making this YouTube channel possible. Thanks to all your support. Subscriptions really help. Sharing this on social media, thumbs up. Hope you're doing well and stay tuned for more.